Uh, good afternoon and thank you all for attending today's seminar. Uh, I'm glad to introduce our speaker, today's seminar speaker, Dr. Shumit Jaina. Uh, Dr. Jaina was born and brought up in India. He did his undergraduate and graduate from Kuru Khetro University in India. Then he joined um, uh, Haryana University, yeah. Agricultural University, and did his PhD from there. After finishing his PhD, he joined Indian Ag Agricultural Research Institute, which is really a very prestigious institute. And he worked there on vector and virus interaction. Today, Dr. Jangra will talk about virus and thrips relationship. All of you know that touch virus is a very important and very serious problem in our vegetable fields. And um, Dr. Shumit Chandra has a lot of expertise in, uh, in vector virus relationship and she will give us some new information today. So with that, we will go. Thank you, Dr. Kim, and a very uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I sh today I shall be talking about as Dr. Shield mentioned on tips in tosproviruses, basically, uh, I'll be sharing my experience working with uh, tips and tosproviruses in the last couple of years. Mm, mainly, I'll be talking with tips polyny and associated uh, viruses. So, uh, a little bit introduction about uh, tips and tosproviruses. Uh, tips are a tiny fringe wing insect of around less than one mm in size. And uh, at present, uh, more than 6,000 species of thrips and bees has been reported. And uh, more than 1,000 plant host uh, the thrips as vectors and uh, uh, in, among both dicots and monocots. And among these uh, so many thrips, only 1% are reported at agricultural pests. And uh, uh, toscoviruses are transmitted by thrips in uh, persistent propagative manner, and uh, only 16 thrips species are reported to transmit more than 29 toscoviruses. And uh, annual economic losses uh, are of around 1.4 million are caused by single toscoviruses, uh, that is, tomato spotted wilt viruses. And the thrips palmy alone is a vector of more than seven toscoviruses. Uh, thrips palmy was initially identified in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, like from here, Java, basically, it was uh, early ident uh, identified first for the first time, and now it has spread all over the world except the Europe. Uh, it was uh, I, though it was identified in Europe, but it was eradicated uh, from the greenhouse, and the fields were ed eradicated. And uh, the uh, thrips transmit uh, thrips palmy transmitted grounded but no precious virus ca causes annual economic losses of 89 million in Asia. And another virus that is transmitted by this palmy, that is watermelon, but necrosis virus causes uh, 50 million economic losses. And these, you can see the uh, feeding uh, damages and the viruses, like when the plants become like this after the thrips uh, feeding. Uh, so, like when we talk about thrips and toscovirus in relationship, the first primary thing is we should have a pure culture of thrips and viruses. So I'll be beginning with talking about the uh, pure culture of establishment of a pure culture of uh, thrips palmy. So uh, the initial population was collected from the fields of the IRI and uh, was brought to lab and was identified based on the morphometric keys, standard mor morphometric keys and the mitochondrial cytochrome oxidase sequencing. We opted two basic methods for uh, like establishing the population. One is the detached leaf method and another is the full leaf method. So, like the initial verified tips palmy was released on the these boxes, like a single box, and then when the new adults were generated, they were trans transferred to the different adult uh, different boxes, and then thereafter they were shifted to the plants. So, uh, the uh, tips palmy generally undergoes different uh, uh, life stages, and like first instar larva, second instar larva, pre pupa, pupa, and adult. All the tips undergoes these uh, uh, life stages. And we maintained our population at 28 degrees Celsius, 60% relative humidity, and 16 hours of light. So, all like I, I tell, and everybody knows that the uh, tosoviruses are transmitted by chips. But do they also have a negative effect on their vector? So, to study that, we 
studied the effect of GBNV that is grounded by process virus and water balloon to no process virus on its vector. What how pathogenic the uh, the virus is to its vector. And we found that uh, uh, when uh, uh, the virus the threats are exposed to viruses, the larval uh, stages are extended and the adult longevity is extended in reduced in both uh, males and females. Fecundity is also reduced and uh, when it comes to survivability, like thrips, uh, GBNB was was more pathogenic to thrips colony than WBNB. Like uh, the the uh, lifestyle was reduced, and uh, I I like we were continuously using adults, and we were continuously uh, not able to maintain the thrips colony population in the uh, our lab. So we thought of identifying the best suitable host for. Uh, thrips colony. So we studied different plants. Uh, those are found to be host of the thrips colony. We studied different plants like cucumber, uh, cowpea, capsicum, brinjal, tobacco, and cotton. And we found that brinjal was the most suitable host for thrips colony in case of like the increase in number, growth, and uh, generation times. And the feeding area was also found to be maximum in uh, thrips uh, uh, in case of brinjal and cotton. And also, we tested the vector competence of these hosts, and we found that cucumber was most susceptible, followed by cowpea. However, no vector uh, virus transmission was observed in case of brinjal and cotton by this point. So, coming to the rapid diagnostics. So, whenever we say like uh, management, uh, developing a management options for like any virus or uh, vector or whatever we say, their early detection is the of the prime importance. If we could uh, detect the pathogen early, then we could be able to uh, develop the suitable management st uh, strategies at early stages. So uh, we develop uh, threats generally remain in mixed population, and it is uh, like difficult for a non-expert to identify them by just visually seeing them, which threats species it is. So we develop a, a multiplex PCR assay for uh, like the. the Major predominant thrips vector in India, the predominant thrips vectors in India are thrips palmi, thrips tabasi, spritothrips dorsalis, and frankinella sulji. So a single uh, PCR reaction could detect all these four pathogens in a single reaction. So this uh, kind of uh, uh, assay can be used to, to study the early detection and study the distribution profile in the field, like what, what different kind of thrips are present in the field and study the disease epidemiology. Uh, so, like I said, early diagnosis. When we talk about early diagnosis, the <clears throat> the first thing, thing that hinders are like the DNA extraction and the PCR. Those are the longest part of any early diagnosis we say. So, to eliminate the need of uh, this, uh, like the DNA extraction, and uh, first I'll be talking about DNA extraction, then I'll come to PCR and then the gel and later. So to eliminate the need of DNA extraction, we uh, tested different rapid DNA extraction methods like uh, extraction in simple water, NaCl, EDTA, and elution from the uh, nitrocellulose membrane. And we found that uh, and compared these methods with the standard, that is the CTAP-based DNA extraction and the uh, kit-based DNA extraction. And we found that the DNA extracted from the rapid methods was higher than that of kit and uh, the CTAP based method. Though uh, the quality of uh, these uh, DNA was not that as good as uh, that for the CTAP and kit based method, but the concentration was higher. And uh, similarly, we tested uh, these in uh, nano, 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 nano drop and the fluoromet fluorometer. And uh, we also uh, found that uh, the the DNA extracted through uh, like SDW and PBS that has the similar uh, quality as that of kit and uh, CETA based method. And we could say that these this method are like involves if we uh, isolate our DNA from C, uh, SDW, it does not involve any cost because it's for just water. So it was good because we uh, it was geo cost method. And we also uh, tested this is like say, very simple and cheap and we could do it like just uh, we, what we did was like we collected the insect and uh, put the insect in a 1.5 ml micro centrifuge to tube and then heated the tube at 98 degrees Celsius for two minutes and the lysate was used as a DNA as a template and in the PCR also and then we further 
uh, we assumed that if we could detect the pathogen uh, by using these methods as a uh, template. So what we tested is like the detection of chili leaf curl virus. Chili leaf curl virus is a bigoma virus is generally transmitted by white flies. So we tested if we could detect the presence of chili leaf curl virus by the, these simple uh, DNA extraction methods and we found that the amplicon is as comparable to the, the it and CETA based method. Now, like what we uh, we eliminated the need of DNA extraction. Now we need to eliminate uh, the need of uh, uh, this uh, thermal cycle. Uh, so what uh, we did was we opted a uh, recombinase polymerase amplification based strategy to develop a rapid diagnostic assay for Crips polymer. Uh, the the DNA extraction method was uh, simple, like uh, the collected the Crips in the tube uh, then. Added water and then the crush uh, the sample and then place in the boiling water boiling water and then this was used as a uh, template and we standardized the reaction to be completed at thirty seven degrees Celsius so that the reaction can be completed by just holding the tube in the hands it, because the body temperature is thirty seven degrees Celsius so, so the reaction can be completed at thirty seven degrees Celsius so another component when we come about early detection is the Visualization of the uh, sample uh, or the results. The standard method is the visualization with the gel. So uh, to eliminate the need of the gel, we tested the, uh, the fluorescence-based dyes, that is the cyber green, and another dye is good view. And the presence of this palmy can be detected by uh, the strong fluorescence signal. As we can say, no fluorescence signal is in the negative sample. And like here, we need UV light. So to, another thing is to eliminate the need of the UV light. What we did is we tested another color-based dye. So the color of, of the pos uh, positive sample changes to light blue, then the negative sample. Uh, once the reaction is completed, the color changes from dark blue to light blue. So the RPA-based technology can be completed within 20 minutes on site without the need of any sophisticated lab instrument. And it is it can detect as low as 0.2 atograms of DNA and it, it is 10 to the power of nine times fold more sensitive than PCR reaction. Uh, so uh, like this, uh, the RPA is a patented technology and it is highly costly. So we were looking for uh, alternative uh, technologies to make it the detection cheaper. So we come across another technology that is polymerase spiral reaction based assay. Uh, the polymerase spiral reaction assay is a hybrid of both PCR and LAMP assay. All that uh, all we know, LAMP generally uses for set of primers. And uh, another drawback is like uh, uh, they give generally gives false positive. When you do LAMP, you get a lot of false positives. So to cope up with these, we develop this RPA, PSR based technology that uses the BST polymerase. The lamp also uses the BST polymerase and it is uh, not that uh, uh, costly than our normal tag polymerase also. Uh, it costs around that only. So the rest of the procedure is the same. What we did in uh, the RPA, we collected the fifth sample, uh, then heated it at uh, uh, the DNA to uh, extract the DNA at 900 degrees Celsius for two minutes and then the PSR was performed at 65 degrees Celsius for 70 minutes. And the like the results can be visualized with the help of the cyber green dye or good view in by the UV torch or the chlorometric dye by change in the color from dark blue to violet. As you can see here, all these are the strong positive samples and the rest are the negative samples. There's strong fluorescence in the positive sample samples and no fluorescence in the negative samples. Uh, this was not that sensitive as that of uh, like RPA, but still uh, five times more sensitive than the normal PCR. And the most uh, good thing was it is more, much cheaper than our RPA. Uh, so like uh, coming to uh, Tripstosco virus, in the next couple of slides, I'll be just talking about uh, studying Trips and Tosco virus relationship at cellular level. So when we talk about cellular level, what we need is uh, cell line uh, to interact the cell line with the viruses. 
and the till date no, no uh, cell line is available for chips call me so we undertook this project to develop a uh, cell line for chips call me so to develop a cell line what we need is the embryonic tissue so to get more number of embryonic tissue we designed an artificial oviposition setup and uh, uh, standardized a diet to get the maximum number of eggs from there so uh, the pine pollen with 10 percent honey solution yielded the maximum number of eggs when as compared to other other diets and uh, we also studied the embryogenesis of strips palmy uh, so like when we are picking up the eggs like this is the setup we peel the upper layer of uh, uh, the parafilm and take the eggs with the help of a uh, camel brush so when we uh, we are taking the eggs under the microscope we could know that what stage egg we are picking uh, to implant uh, in our cell culture uh, so uh, to study the uh, develop the we started with the development of a primary cell culture of thrips palmy we studied uh, evaluated different methods like different media uh, different substrates different ph uh, and different uh, combinations of all these uh, to establish a primary cell culture so what we uh, we found was the a modified kimura's medium at a ph of 7 was found to be best in terms of uh, the cell uh, multiplication in or, or other terms and when we talk about substrate uh, the uh, non vented flask with the poly d lysine coated flask was found to be the best and uh, uh, okay we also tested uh, the different uh, eggs what we i told like whatever i we are picking different stages eggs we also tested like different stage eggs we are picking and what is the result in their growth and development so we started with the early r stage egg like at 10 to 20 r stage egg and those were implanted in the media and we could observe numerous single cells when we uh, did with the uh, early r stage eggs but we could not observe any multiplication in these cells though we could uh, observe uh, like uh, nuclear multiplication you could also see like from here you could see a number a more number of uh, nuclei were there but no cytoplasmic division was there so we move, move one step ahead and tested the eggs at uh, like 30 to 50 hour stage but still the scenario was the same uh, there was a mix of uh, single cells and clumps but we could not uh, uh, get no multiplication was observed so we moved one step ahead and tested uh, the 70 to 80 hour stage egg these stage egg are generally called red eye stages because uh, like here you could see a uh, uh, like red color dot that generally uh, shows the eye of the insect the eye development of the insect so they are generally called red eye stage eggs so we picked uh, the eggs at 70 to 80 hours stage and uh, like implanted them in media and we could see the generation of fibroblast like cells you could see here the cell uh, new cell is fibroblast like cell is generating so we moved ahead with the uh, fibro uh, these uh, egg at 70 to 80 hour stage to develop our primary culture so uh, we collected eggs from the 70 to 80 hour stage and implanted them uh, them in the media and uh, we started uh, the fibroblast like cells uh, started generating uh, 3 hours after the tissue implantation and the networking within the cells could be observed 6 days post implantation and uh, we could say that the uh, the cell culture survived for like 37 days and providing sufficient time to establish the uh, primary uh, to like the uh, transfect the virus uh, to transfect the cell culture with the virus so it was like very challenging it took us around at least three years to come to here up to this stage so the next part now the next stage is like to get the purified virus particle to transfect the now we have obtained the cell culture so we need to transfect the cell culture with the virus particle so now we need the purified virus particle so what we did is we sap inoculated the nv with the gbnv and uh, purified the GBN, gbnv particles and uh, the in the time uh, the uh, the purified purified particles showed tospovirus like characteristics so these purified particles were transfected to the uh, cell culture and a strong uh, and the uh, were localized with the help of a, a coated antibodies the fitc coated antibodies were used 
and we could observe a strong fluorescent signal in the nuclei of the uh, cells. So we could say that the viruses are localizing or interacting with the nuclei of the cell. Uh, now we are coming to the uh, Thrips-Tospovirus interactions at uh, genomic levels. So uh, to study the Thrips-Tospovirus relationship at genomic level, we did a transcriptome analysis and uh, of the virus infected and non-infected uh, Thrips palmi. Generally, we uh, did uh, this with the GBNB uh, infected and non-infected Thrips palmi. So uh, the transcriptome analysis yielded uh, more than 28,000 differentially expressed transcripts of these uh, more than 200, 2000 transcripts were like uh, significantly expressed. Of these 2000 transcripts, one th more than 1000 words are regulated and more than uh, nine, 900 words like down regulated. Like the Go analysis showed that mo most of these uh, uh, transcripts were involved in cellular component by molecular functions and biological functions. The KGG analysis uh, showed that these transcripts are involved in regulation of various signaling pathways. Um, like among those uh, differentially expressed transcripts, we validated 13 uh, transcripts with the help of uh, the qPCR. And the qPCR analysis, uh, the gene expression analysis in the qPCR was in accordance with the RNA-seq data. Like the genes that were uh, upregulated in RNA-seq data were found to be upregulated in the qPCR and the genes, uh, those were found to be downregulated in the RNA-seq data were found to be downregulated in RT-qPCR analysis. So now comes uh, coming to the uh, functional analysis of uh, genes of the Thrips palmi in virus relationship. So the functional role of uh, Thrips palmi genes in TOSPO viruses is yet to be understood and uh, the genetic targets are still uh, to be known or still to be identified. So now we have available us with the transcriptome data. So we dig uh, that transcriptome data to find the genetic targets that can be uh, suited for to study the uh, virus and vector interactions. So we identified, uh, we uh, look into different genes that uh, we could target and we uh, selected two genes that is BTK29A and uh, Col3A1. We synthesized uh, we took identify these genes based on the, the number of putative siRNAs they are producing and the non cross reactivity with the other genetic targets. Like if we say uh, you identify a dsRNA and this that the dsRNA region is interacting with the other um, other beneficial insects or killing other beneficial insects that then it won't be of any use. So uh, with uh, with took the region that was non-cross-reactive with any other regions, any other insects, and synthesized the dsRNA uh, of uh, these regions. And this dsRNA was uh, purified by digestion with the DNAs1 and RNAs1 and was used in feeding biases with the feeding biases. Uh, so to deliver uh, the dsRNA to the thrips, uh, we developed a feeding setup like uh, uh, and an artificial diet. Uh, the, the artificial diet com com provides a fine pollen, sucrose, and SDW. And uh, also a blue tracking diet was added uh, to this to get to know that the thrips are feeding or not feeding. So uh, we inserted that diet in the cap of the 2ML tube and covered uh, the, the, it with a uh, paraffin. And the thrips were released in the 2ML tube and then they were allowed to feed on the DSRNA for 24 hours. After that, uh, the effect of DSRNA on their uh, survivability and gene expression was recorded and we found that 60% uh, mortality was observed in case of the BTK29A fed thrips and 50% mortality was observed in case of uh, all three one DSRNA fed thrips. And uh, like uh, a gene regul down regulation of threefold was observed in case of uh, BTK29A DSRNA and 3.15 was ob obtained in case of all three one fed thrips. Now, we also studied the effect of uh, this DSRNA on virus acquisition. Is, is there any role in virus acquisition or no? So, uh, the first, uh, I would like to mention that only first instar larvae can ex acquire the virus. Since first instar larvae can only acquire the virus, later stages cannot acquire the virus. And 
if they are the virus is not acquired at the early stages they cannot transmit it. so uh, so uh, the l1 stage uh, larvae were collected and uh, they were allowed to feed, uh, feed for on the dsrna for 2 hours and then they were allowed to acquire virus for 24 hours because in 24 hours uh, they will uh, get to the l2 stage and they won't acquire the virus so uh, they were not allowed for further virus acquisition so around like the 100 larvae were collected and they were uh, you can see uh, they were released on uh, this is a gbnb infected leaf the leaf was plugged and placed on on the water uh, so that it get get floating on the water so that they are forced to feed on the virus infected plant uh, if otherwise you leave it like this they will move away so in, they won't go to water so they were allowed to uh, forcefully allowed to feed on the virus and after 24 hours of feeding their the virus copy number was calculated and we found that uh, nine fold down regulation in virus copy number was observed in uh, btk29 a fat dsrna and surprisingly uh, the virus copy number was increased in all three of dsrna fat chips uh, fat chips because you uh, maybe like uh, the collagen is the first line of defense uh, in in what we say insect or humans or whatever we say but this need to be this needs further validations what would be the possible reasons of the increase in the uh, virus copy number and also the gene expression was also measured at uh, uh, the larval stages and it was found to be five fold down regulation in case of uh, uh, btk29a and two fold in case of uh, call 3 a one fat dsrna thank you Question. Well, it's a lot of information, but yeah, thank you for your presentation. But I want to ask you, like, what are your plans for you know, tree farming management? Like in South Florida, please we you like all of those knowledge and experiences that I was bad, like yeah, I I'll be like uh, um my uh, drop seal and we were talking about this only like my next uh, uh, task will be I'll working on now I'll be working on another thing and my next will be like working on CS uh, uh, the capsicum chlorosis virus and uh, trips so that will be my next target to work on that and explore that medium. 